Welcome, Josh. I really, really appreciate you hopping on this uh, interview with me today. It is a beautiful Saturday morning, <laughs> and I'm really happy that you took time. Um, so today, guys, I'm going to be interviewing Josh. Pronounce your last name for me. It's pronounced Irabu. Irabu? Are yep. you Nigerian? I'm Ugandan. Yeah. Ugandan. Okay, I'm Nigerian. Oh, well, that's cool. Yeah, so... Um, we have Josh here today, and I'm really excited to interview him. He's an agent out of New out of Nebraska, Omaha, Nebraska, um, and I'm really excited because he's a fellow YouTuber, and I love talking to other YouTubers because, I mean, YouTube is an amazing platform. So we're going to dive into that. We're going to dive into his real estate agent business, and we're going to talk all about Josh today. So Josh, um, first question of the day is, who are you? Where are you from? I already said you're from Nebraska, but where are you yeah. from anyway? And then, uh, yeah, just give us a background of you. Yeah, so I've been in real estate about a year. I think I had my one-year anniversary like last week. Uh, oh, so nice. Congrats. Thank you. A lot of agents still survive a year. <laughs> it was it was tough. I, I barely pulled through, but <laughs> we made it to a year. Um, when I first got licensed, that's when I started the YouTube channel, um, put out my first video on Thanksgiving, and then YouTube kind of became this uh, passion project for me. And it's helped me, you know, get connected with a lot more people and just, you know, bring a lot more opportunities. Um, so there's YouTube, real estate for one year. Uh, I mainly work in Lincoln. I do a little bit of business up in Omaha as well, but oh, okay. that's pretty much it. Gotcha, gotcha. Now tell the people how old you are. I just turned, well, just turned, I'm 20 years old. I turned 20. 20 June. years old as a real estate agent. Now that is very young. We all know that's very young. I think the average age for a real estate agent is like 50. Something like that. I have something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just like, and I'm not, I'm not as young as you. I'm 28, but being like, just, yeah, just being in your 20s in real estate is really, is like really interesting. So I guess let's dive right into it. So how is it being a young black professional as a real estate agent in Nebraska? Like, how's been, how's your experience been? I mean, as you'd probably expect, Nebraska's, um, you know, mainly white, white population. Um, but to be honest, I haven't faced a whole lot of like discrimination or uh, hardships just because I'm young and black. I'd feel like I've actually got more people to work with me because I am young and I'm black. I think it helps me stand out. As long as you act professional, people want to work with you. You know, they want to work with the underdog. Um, I actually just got a listing. We went live on Thursday and the guy listed with me because he's black and I was the only black realtor to call him. And he's like, hey, I want to work with people that look like me. I didn't have to give a presentation or anything. He's like, I like you. You're professional. You're young. Here's the listing. Just go and sell it. I'm like, okay, say less. That's so, amazing. yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, I've actually had the same similar experience. Like people have asked me, like, what's been my challenges? And I'm like, it's crazy because maybe it's just my mindset, but I just use it as an advantage. Like I come across people who do want to work with, you know, the young black person that's like coming up, you know, um, you know, they just want to help us out. You know what I mean? So they rather work with us and they trust us a little bit more than, you know, some other people outside the community, which is fine, you know? So I've had similar experience. Um, so you've been a, a, an agent for a year now. Yeah. A year, have you noticed, like, have you, like when you jumped into being a real estate agent, did you jump in with like other people? And like, have you noticed like who stayed on and who fell off or have you kind of seen the gap of things? I haven't really. Um... I had some friends with me that were going, you know, going to get their license. You know, they went through the classes and never did. Um, I haven't really kept in touch with the people that I took classes with because I took my classes in person. Okay. Um, all the people that I know, they've stayed in it, you know, for a year. Uh, we'll see where they're at, you know, in two years. We'll see where I'm at in two years. But uh, so far, yeah, everybody okay. I know is kind of stuck with it. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. So I guess a better question would be, um, what actually got you into real estate? Like, why did you decide to become a real estate agent in the first place? I don't like love houses or anything. Um, I'm in it because I've always wanted to work for myself and I didn't want to go to college. So I went to college for a semester and I was like, nope, I already knew this wasn't for me. <laughs> Dropped out. I was working construction. And I was like, you know what? Being a real estate agent, I've heard about it before. Let me look into it a little bit. Um, and it, it sounded perfect because I'm self-employed, but I don't have to have like a ton of capital to go and start a business. You know, if I wanted to open up like a physical location, like a restaurant or something, like minimum 30 grand or something, you know, yeah. real estate, $3,000. I've got my license. I'm set up with my broker. I'm ready to go. I can sell one house and make everything back. Right. And I get to help people along the process, move them on to the next chapters of their life. There's unlimited potential. I was like, 
It's perfect. Sign me up. Wow. That's, that's amazing. So, all right. You mentioned college. So mm -hmm. you went to college for a semester. Why only a semester? Like what, what made you like drop out? So I, I wanted to be an engineer for like the longest time. That's Typical all African I thought. career. <laughs> totally different. So junior year of high school, uh, I got this opportunity to take some college classes for engineering. And I was like, okay, let's do it. I love engineering. I'm, I'm ready to go. They put me in differential physics. It's like, nope, I cheated throughout the entire class. I got maybe a C <laughs> plus. I was struggling. I was like, okay, engineering's not for me. This sucks. I thought I'd just be like sticking parts together and like make a robot like out of thin air. I was like, that's <laughs> awesome. But there's a lot more to it than that. So I shifted and he's like, you know, I've always kind of liked making money. I like working for myself. Um, let me take a look at some of like the business classes that they're offering. So I enroll in the business pathway. And throughout that, I've, I've tried a lot of different things. I did Amazon FBA. I launched a product on Amazon. Uh, broke even. It was fun. Mm -hmm. I did drop shipping. Lost a lot of money. <laughs> uh, I've done, you know, a lot of different side hustles. But even though, like, I lost money or didn't make a lot of money, it was always a lot more fun than, like, when I worked at Walmart or KFC or something, right. you know? Yeah. So I didn't really see the need for college. I was like, if you work hard enough at something, you can make it work. Yes. And I see so many people that don't go to college that are still successful, you know? And so I was like, you know what? I've made up my mind. I'm not going to go to college. Everybody's like, ah, uh, you should really go to college. I'm like, nope, my mind's made up. Um, but then I was able to go to a community college free for like a year. So I was like, you know what? Let me try it out for a semester. If it's not for me, I can drop out and start doing what I want to do. Yeah. So I tried it out just to see if I was missing out. And yeah, uh, it just wasn't for me. <laughs> so I'm pretty biased against college, even though I went to college. Um, okay, so you are, you're obviously you're Ugandan, so you're African. So yeah. Africans have this, they have, they want you to be in a certain career path, doctor, engineer, mm -hmm. you know, uh, anything medical or sciences, right. you know what I mean? So when you decided to drop out of college, which is huge as an African, <laughs> how did you, yeah, it's been, how, how was that? Like, how did your parents take it? Like, what was that like? I kind of did it in a bit of like a sneaky way. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, so I was in community college, right? Uh, like August 2019 through December 2019, that, that semester. Mm -hmm. Then I dropped out in December. I didn't necessarily tell my mom. I just kind of enrolled in real estate classes. And then she's like, oh, so how's school going? I'm like, oh, I'm taking real estate classes. So she thinks I'm like still in school until I got my license. I'm like, oh, hey, by the way. Um, but I think at that point she was like, okay, well, you know, at least he's got something. But like, I'd still hear all the time, hey, you see everything about going back to college, you need to get a real job, this real estate thing, I don't know, you know, I don't know about it, you know, you're young, are they really gonna trust you to sell a house? You know, just concerned, you know, like any parent is. Right. Um, but then, you know, once you sell your first house, once I started getting some results on YouTube, uh, then the support, you know, kind of started rolling in. But um, right. I don't know if that was the best way to go about it, but that that's what I did. Yeah, no, that's that's exactly what I do too. It's just like yeah. I can't tell them until after I make the decision because they're gonna try to deter you from it like a hundred percent. You know what I mean? That's literally what I do. Um, yeah. And I did kind of I took a similar path where like I played pro basketball after college. I never really had a real job. Um, mm -hmm. I did come back and then get a job, and I started I started doing all these different types of businesses and everything like that. Um, but I would typically quit my jobs because I would be so focused on being an entrepreneur and they would have this concern of where are you going to bring in consistent money? And I understood their concern, but it was like, listen, like the opportunity is there. It's always there. Like you said, if you work hard towards something, like you will eventually start to get results. But the support again, started to come, the support for me started to come after they started seeing some type of money, like, right. especially when I started wholesaling, they were like, well, what is this real estate thing? You're not an agent but you're not like buying houses. What are you doing? I'm like, well, I mean, I just got a 16 K check. Do you care? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so yes, results have to show. So, but I do want to dive into some of the things that you said. Now, when it comes to like being an entrepreneur, I feel like a lot of, a lot of people think that like you jump into something and then you immediately take off. Like, no, like for you, you're still young and you've already tried multiple things, Amazon, FBA, um, job ship and a couple other things. So I guess, um, <clears throat> I guess out of the out of all your experiences in, in different like lanes, which one kind of taught you the most lessons or like what would you say about like now you're having a lot of success in real estate? Like 
what was your experience like and what did you learn from your previous endeavors? I think what probably taught me the most was drop shipping, even though I sucked at it. Now I've got friends that are you know really good at it, but I personally just could never figure it out. But sticking with it, you know, and trying product after product, you're losing a ridiculous amount of money too much, but um, <laughs> kind of taught me to stick with it. Cause then once I got into real estate, it's like, okay, if I'm not seeing results, I still need to wait like 90 days, you know? Um, so then about two and a half months in, that's when I got my first deal. But I don't think I would have had the right mindset if I hadn't done things like drop shipping or Amazon FBA, where it takes a lot of different tries to really get good at it, you know? Right. Yeah. 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 Amazon FBA and drop shipping, they can be very lucrative, but you know, there's, there's a learning curve that comes with that as, as it does with everything. So that's yeah. really, um, that's really interesting. So now I want to get into my favorite part about being a real estate agent is being on YouTube. So I love, I love being on YouTube. So why did you, why did you create a YouTube channel? Like, what was the start of that? Like, why? Well, so like in my free time, um, after I'd given up engineering, I was like, okay, business is where it's at. I love finance, love making money. So every day after school, if I wasn't working, uh, I was on YouTube watching like Graham Stephan, Andre Jick, meet Kevin, you know, those guys. Um, and it just kind of, you know, got me thinking like, wow, you can, you know, really make something on YouTube. I have a monotone voice. I'm not super energetic. I am an introvert. I'm not super outgoing, but it's like, okay, I, I think, I think I can do this, you know? Um, so I decided, okay, when I get my license, I'm going to start a YouTube channel. I'm going to document what I'm doing. And then worst case scenario just keeps me accountable. So hopefully people subscribe and they ask like, Hey, Josh, I haven't posted in a while. What's going on? Mm -hmm. um, and then maybe best case scenario in like two years, it starts making some money, you know, and then it's like another income stream. Right. And it started taking off after about three months. And I was like, okay, this is, you know, this is, this is kind of serious. Um, <laughs> So I think I've always wanted YouTube to kind of be like another career. So I don't want to be in real estate forever. Um, I want YouTube to potentially be my next thing. It's like I do real estate to get me enough money to, you know, invest in properties. And then I document myself investing properties on YouTube. And then I use the YouTube money to buy more properties, you know, just kind of like an infinite loop yeah. of money. Yep. Yeah. That's, it's funny because that's exactly what my plan is. This, this is why I listen to... Um, it's called uh, Think Media. I listen to them a lot because um, oh, yeah. they talk about how to help people become full-time YouTubers. So I kind of want to go down that path too um, of just being, they call it like a either a YouTube entrepreneur or just a content entrepreneur in general. Um, so sure. it's really interesting that you say that because, um, well, let me ask you, why don't you want to become a real estate? Why don't you want to stay a real estate agent? Well, okay, it's fun, you know, uh, but at the end of the day, we still work for our clients. And like we were talking off air, when, when we work with buyers, it can be very demanding depending on the type of buyer, you know? So yeah, you're self-employed, but it's like, if your buyer wants to go see a property, you got to go show them a property. Yep. If your seller needs something, you got to, you know, like you got to go help them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Real estate investing, I feel like you're more kind of on your own. You've got a lot more freedom. Um, and not to mention, you can kind of set yourself up for retirement. Whereas like with real estate, you're always... Or like with being an agent, you're always chasing like the next deal, you know, but with real estate, it's like you buy some rental properties 20, 30 years when they're paid off, then it's like a pretty good retirement, you know, yeah. um, that's why I don't necessarily want to be an agent forever, get more in real estate investing, stock market, that stuff. Gotcha. So being a real estate agent, I kind of look at it as using to generate, you know, active income, whereas though investing is where you generate like the passive income, you, you have more freedom of what you want to do. Um, so. I think one of the reasons why we're both probably with eXp Realty is because of this opportunity to kind of retire. Like they kind of pitch it to where like you're able, you actually have a retirement plan with, you know, the stocks and building a, a downline using rev share um, and everything like that. So um, I guess let's dive right into that. So what exactly made you join um, eXp Realty? Just like you said, it's the rev share and the stock program. Now, if I hadn't done YouTube, or if EXP never existed, I would have always stayed at my previous brokerage. It was fantastic. But with YouTube having the following that I had, and then what EXP offers, you know, that passive income, I was like, okay, it makes sense. So YouTube's been able to help me grow my downline. And, uh, you know, in a couple of years, retirement's going to be looking pretty good. Not that I'm going to retire in a couple of years, but <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like yeah. in a couple of years, I could, you know, see myself being a lot more comfortable. Um, 
you know, I wouldn't have to sell real estate if I didn't want to. I wouldn't have to invest in real estate. I wouldn't even have to do YouTube if I didn't want to. Mm-hmm. You know, I'd have a lot more freedom to just do whatever I want to do. So, right. Yeah. Right. So with YouTube, right? So what what do you think made you like really take off? Like what was the kind of catalyst for you to because you have about what 15,000 subscribers now? Yeah. Um almost 15k. Almost 15,000 subscribers. Yeah. So what like really made you take off with YouTube? So I think the biggest thing is just providing value and, you know, value can be like entertainment. It can be like information. It can be your own unique perspective, you know, on a topic. I think that providing value in a way that, yeah, I'm providing valuable content, but also like I'm relating with my audience. So I'm a new agent. I let them know, Hey, I'm a new agent. I don't really know what I'm doing. Follow me, you know, along with this journey and we can learn together. Um, I think coming from that perspective helps a lot. And then learning like SEO, you know, keywords, tags, all that sort of stuff, learning all this stuff on the back end that helps a ton because you can make the best video in the world, but if you don't know how to get it in front of people, it's never going to get views, you know? Um, So value SEO, and then just kind of trial and error. Um, You know, I've learned from different courses. I've done a lot of mistakes, um, you know, and then then you just kind of learn. So. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's true. Um, It's kind of like what because I watch, I, well, I used to watch a lot of Gary Vee and he was, he always used to say like, instead of worrying about like, you know, I guess posting certain things, just document your journey and right. um, you being just transparent and letting people know, Hey, I'm a new agent. is kind of the same way that I've been able to get my results. Um, because I don't go around like acting like I know everything. I'm just like, mm-hmm. Hey, like, you know, I have this deal going on or I'm doing this and like, yeah, let's learn together. I'm learning, you're learning. And then like, I'm also being able to build myself up as like a brand or a local authority um, because I'm showing you what's really going on, you know, in the real world. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, So I guess, how do you kind of plan to, in what direction do you plan to continue to go with your YouTube channel? Like, cause I know you've mentioned, like you do like talking about finance, but I know there was a point that you put like some finance videos and it didn't really like go the way you wanted. What's your plan for YouTube? This also involves TikTok. So I've lately gotten on TikTok. TikTok, you don't even post on Instagram. (laughs) I know, I know. I've got like one or two. Anyway, Instagram, I don't understand Instagram. I can't understand it. What do you post? It's simple. You post like anything. I'm in this room 99% of the time. If I'm not here, I'm on an appointment. It's like, I don't know. Anyway, (laughs) so I'm on TikTok. So on TikTok, I'm talking more about finance stuff you know, just like some basic stuff, you know, helping people around my age, you know, get more familiar with their finances and real estate. Mm -hmm. So that's going to help grow the YouTube channel more with people that are interested in finance, uh, rather than only real estate agents, you know, I kind of want to mix. So then I can start putting out finance related videos. And then I want to get my first investment property, either like do a fix and flip and document that, which I think would be fantastic. Um, Or, you know, get a rental and do that next year and document that. Um, you know, and then put that on the channel with some finance stuff. And then, you know, every now and then sprinkle in like some real estate agent content. That's how I kind of want to transition the channel. Um, so, so yeah. you wanted to, eventually you wanted to kind of be more of a overall finance channel, not, not just a real estate agent channel. Right. Like Graham Stephan, like, um, Ryan, Ryan Pineda, you know, he does yeah. real estate investing, yeah. wholesaling, yeah. couch flipping, finance, you know, whatever he wants to do. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I think that's a good way. Um, I think at some point, I think it's good to niche down in the in the beginning because you got to like, you got to be able to, when people think of your name, they got to think of like one thing at first. Mm-hmm. And then after you build that audience, then you can start to branch out. Um, and I realized that as well on my channel when I started posting, like first I started posting, I started my channel so long ago. It was like about yeah. vegan recipes because I was vegan. And um, then it transitioned. I didn't post too much, but when I started the real estate journey, I was posting all about like investing. And then that transitioned to like transitioned into like being a real estate agent. And at some point I do kind of want to expand it a little bit more, but I think I'm still going to keep it in the overall realm of real estate because there's so much when it comes to real estate, like you said, there's investing, you can be wholesaling, you can do like all these different types of things, mobile homes, all like, you know what I mean? Um, Right. So so that's interesting that you say that. So my next question is, um, when it comes to YouTube again, why do you think that other agents should be on YouTube and how can they kind of get on YouTube? Because you're, like you said, you're more like, I guess, more so introverted or you just don't, like, you're not, you know, you have the monotone voice, which I noticed that your videos were like less, you had less energy in your earlier yeah, video. Yeah. And then you started to build yourself up and be like more, I guess, enthusiastic and energetic. 
um, which is really the same thing with my videos. I was kind of like, uh, and then I'm like starting to realize because you have to kind of have like a little bit of an acting. Uh, acting. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of like yeah, acting. It's a totally different person. You got the hand movements and you're talking yes. louder, smiling. <laughs> yeah. Like, so, like if somebody's watching you talk on camera, they think that you look kind of crazy. Like right. Watch. Yeah. Right. When you're watching this, it, like, oh, okay, it makes sense. But yeah, when other people are watching you, it's kind of like, it's really weird. But yeah, so why do you think other agents should be on YouTube? And I guess, what's your advice to like the more introverted agent? I think agents should get on YouTube for one of two reasons. Either you can use it to generate leads, which I know a lot of agents are doing that. You know, they post content about their local market or they'll do like home tours or something um and there's some agents that are closing like one home a week just off youtube because nobody's really doing it you know yeah. you might see a couple agents but that's that's not enough you know there's still so much room for real estate agents to you know grow their own personal brand on youtube um just post consistently and you can get up to a couple of thousand subscribers in a year maybe um yeah. and start getting some consistent leads that's the first reason to grow your business second if you want to eventually get away from real estate and talk more about your real estate investments and finance and just entrepreneurship in general and help people, you know, just help people with their money. I think that's the second reason to do it. That's kind of why I did it. Cause like I said, I don't want to sell real estate forever. And YouTube is still so untapped and you can start off with talking about being a real estate agent and then eventually, you know, diversify. Right. So <clears throat> what I kind of made the mistake of doing was niching down too much now I'm only known for new real estate agent content, you know, maybe if I had done new real estate agent content and then maybe like, you know, updating people like on real estate news, like the coming housing market crash. Um, and then maybe, you know, throw like some wholesaling or something in there as well, kind of have three different topics. Then it'd be easier for me to expand without having like get on TikTok and build a whole new audience, you know, <laughs> now for introverted people, it's, you, you just kind of have to do it, which sounds like, okay, thanks. But it's, <laughs> you just have to like put out the content before I even put out my first video. I think I made two or three practice videos, just getting a little bit comfortable in front of the camera. I wasn't perfect. Just learning how to edit and film and script a video. And then those videos, nobody's ever going to see them because they're awful. But um, putting those out, you know, and just creating those helped me kind of get more comfortable. And then staying consistent. Once you get the first video out, the second, third, fourth, they're way easier. Just the first yeah. one, you just need to get it out. Yeah. Um, you know, then you're going to gain a whole lot of confidence. Once you see the comments start rolling in, people love your content. Like, man, I was just, I, like, I've been binge watching all your videos. That's really refreshing. It's going to build up your confidence. You can go back and watch my older videos and how my voice sounded. It doesn't sound great, but <laughs> now it sounds a little bit better. You know, I've improved. I feel like I've got more confidence on camera but that just comes with time. So um, just give yourself a little bit of time. It's going to suck at first, but then you'll get better. Yeah, I, I totally agree. So basically you said the main reasons why agents should get on YouTube is pretty much because it's less competition. It's far mm -hmm. less competitive than, you know, cold calling or anything like that. And pretty much the, the ability to grow and expand into other forms of business whether it be you know real estate or anything else so that right. definitely makes sense um and when it comes to just being on camera like you were saying like you just have to do it there really is no shortcut you know what i mean mm -hmm. and as time goes on you do start to get a little bit better but when i tell you like my first couple of videos were like i mean even sometimes now but not so much but like my first couple of videos i was like sweating in front of the camera <laughs> <laughs> it's so it's like awkward it's weird you're talking to this mm -hmm. inanimate object for like you know, an hour at a time or whatever the case is. And it's just like, it's very, it is kind of challenging, but it's, it's a lot for me, it's a lot easier than cold calling. Like I did cold calling uh, for two years. Uh, like I'm good off of cold calling. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, so I think that's really great advice for new agents. Um, what was I going to say? I was going to ask you about something about YouTube. Um, man, it, it, uh, I lost my train of thought. But anyway, all right. So another question I have about YouTube is how do you feel about just like, oh no, what I wanted to ask you, do you see yourself actually starting to grow a team or do you want to stay like a solo agent? Because one of the things that I've thought about is like helping other people like build their YouTube channels, like other agents right. and, you know, just kind of go that route. But how do you feel about like joining or building a team or just staying like a complete solo agent? I never see myself starting like an actual team, you know, with EXP, I've got my organization, you know, my downline and I'm helping those agents, you right. know, and that's, 
about all I really need. I don't want to have the legalities of managing a team and all the, the paperwork and the busy work that comes with that. That's too much for me. I, I want to just stay solo, help people that need my help. As far as teaching people about YouTube, I came out with a YouTube course. I'm like, hey, just go and learn from this. Um, there you go. Maybe when I hit 50K or 100K, I'll you know put out a new course. Um, you know, you know, some things I learned along the way, but that's that's kind of how I want to keep things. I yeah. think right now is a good balance. I've still got my own time and my own freedom, and I don't have to, you know, be in charge of other agents. Um, I'm I'm still a new agent, so I don't you know know exactly what I'm doing, you know, 100, <laughs> like 100. So I don't see myself starting a team anytime soon or ever. Gotcha. gotcha. So you created a YouTube course. Now, what made you actually want to create that course? Because I mean. You know, some people will will be like, I don't know, like when it comes to like the um, online education space, there's some, some, some sometimes there's frauds and sometimes um, I feel like if you are knowledgeable in your field, it can feel kind of like imposter syndrome if yeah. you if you don't hit like a certain number or whatever. Like some people may be like, oh, don't make a course until you hit like a hundred thousand subscribers. But in reality, all you really need to be is like one step ahead. Like I created an, an ebook for YouTube. I have far less subscribers than you, but I hit a milestone to where like people have been demanding to, you know, you know, cer certain type of content and me helping them out. So I guess what made you actually go out there and start a course? That's a good question because I did feel that imposter syndrome. I'm like, okay, I'm only at 10,000, 15,000 subscribers. Should I really put out a course? Maybe I should wait till I hit 25, 50, 100K. But then I was thinking, you know, people want to learn. You know, I've, I've been getting tons of DMs. Hey, how'd you do it? I want to do the exact same thing. I knew that there was demand. And I'm like, if I just phrase it in a way that like I'm completely honest with my audience. So that's why I call it the zero to 10K YouTube Academy, not make millions with YouTube or something, you know, right. like here's how I hit 10,000 on YouTube, follow this. Instead of me portraying it in a way that like I'm some kind of guru, you know, um, I think I think that helps a lot. It doesn't make me seem like a fraud, or like a guru. I think if you want to put out some kind of paid product, there's always going to be demand for it, regardless of what kind of milestone you're at. Even if you've sold, even if you wholesaled one house, you could put out a course, like how I wholesaled my first you know, deal, you know, but just be honest with them and not, you know, say to that audience, Hey, I've sold, you know, a hundred wholesale deals. Uh, here's my course. I mean, like you've only, you know, done like one transaction. I right. think if you're just honest, um, I think if you make a course about what you're knowledgeable on, there's always going to be people that'll buy. Yes, I definitely agree. Um, and the same thing, as I mentioned, like my YouTube ebook, like I say, like, I don't have hundreds of thousands of subscribers. I have like, 1500 subscribers or something like that but I've hit a, a point where like people are constantly asking me questions about YouTube and I'm like right I can't answer everybody like individually and then you're seen as this person that oh you're too big to answer my questions it's like no like I just you know I'm still running my real estate agent business so mm -hmm. you know and you're not necessarily paying you I'm not necessarily asking you to pay me for you know as, asking answer these questions but hey here's my YouTube ebook you can check that out you know what I mean and right. just yeah. being transparent is um is the key so yeah if you're out there and you're thinking and you're out here getting scammed by people who have who think they're doing all this stuff you need to do your research and you also need to understand like what you're getting into like you want to know where they're at in their business and then if that's what you want to emulate then yeah purchase their products um right. and another youtube question so i have for you is okay so your youtube is mainly focused around your agent journey now you said that there's different types of like um YouTube channels, whereas though agents may use their channel to generate leads. And again, yours is more so focused on your journey and like kind of like other real estate agents. So I guess what's your main source of lead generation? And um, you don't really use your, your YouTube to generate leads, I guess. But yeah, what's your main source of like lead generation? I mean, YouTube's brought like a couple of referrals, but I, I wouldn't consider it like a lead generation source. Um, so for me, it's been just cold calling, mostly like for sale by owners. Um, that's where I've been getting my listings and, you know, and then I'll get some buyer referrals, you know, from the YouTube channel or from Instagram or something. Uh, surprisingly, I don't know how, but, um, you know, and then just some other referrals here and there, you know, and then I might, you know, get sphere of influence, but for the most part, it's been prospecting for sale by owners, expired and some absentee owners. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Because like my YouTube channel is a little bit of a mix at first. It was like talking about, um, like just the market and everything like that. And then I realized like I was talking to two different audiences and that's the thing with YouTube, like 
you have to narrow down what you what you want your audience to be like if you're talking about home sales in your local market it's going to be different than you making a video about how you made ten thousand dollars on your last deal like yeah right. you know what i mean like your buyers and sellers don't want to see that that you have to make a separate channel for that so that's why like i have two youtube channels and my main one is documenting my journey and different strategies and everything like that and i have another one that is specific to home buying in Philadelphia. And that's, you know, funny enough, I haven't getting more leads from my original channel, but that's really okay. Well, that's only because I haven't put too much like my Philly area channel is literally I just started that like a couple like two months ago. And I haven't yeah. been posting as much but I've been posting that type of content like around the market on my Instagram, and a little bit on my YouTube. So it's kind of like mixed, but I'm creating that separation. You get what I'm saying? Um, yeah yeah I know what you mean yeah 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 so um so but why do you why do you why do you continue to like cold call like what like has that been effective for you like yeah it's been effective is it fun no it actually really sucks like it's it's effective it works that's why I keep doing it but it's like would I rather be generating leads from like Instagram or TikTok yeah absolutely but I have trouble staying consistent on more than one thing at a time which is why next year I really need to start delegating and outsourcing a whole lot of things. So that's going to be like hiring an editor for the YouTube channel. Um, maybe somebody to help me, you know, with um, TikTok or, or like Instagram or something. Cause eventually, you know, I, I do want to get away from cold calling and, you know, do more things where I've got leads coming to me, you know, like, like, like referrals or like sellers or buyers, you know? Um, but yeah, I've just stuck with cold calling because it's worked. It's been effective, especially with the for sale by owners and the market slowing down a little bit. Yeah. They're having more trouble selling on their own. And I can step in to help. So that's why I keep doing it. It's it took a while to get good at it. So I feel like uh, I'm in too deep to just quit, you know? Yeah. Wait, so you don't I thought you I thought you hired an editor. What happened? So I did. But then I was like, OK, I did it too soon. I tried expanding the channel too soon. And the YouTube channel wasn't bringing in enough revenue at that point to really make sense. And I wasn't staying consistent on my own. So uh, I think it makes sense to hire somebody once I can actually stay consistent. Yeah. You know, um, if I can stay consistent with like two, three videos a week by myself, then I can go and hire an editor, you know. But if not, then I don't think it really makes sense, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's interesting because. For me, hiring an, an editor was like essential because I know if I'm running my real estate agent business, it's so hard to run that efficiently and still like edit your own videos. Because like I used to do videography, so I know how to edit videos and you don't even have to be like a videographer to know how to edit videos. You can keep it simple, but like right. it still takes time. You know what I mean? A lot of time. It takes yeah. a lot of time. So I'm just like, no, right from the get go, I'm just going to hire somebody. And yes. So essentially I've put money out into my channel before I've gotten money in, um, which is fine for me. Cause I was in a place that, where I was able to, well, kind of able to do that, but I was willing to do that. Um, but even so to, the, to this day, like I still hire an editor and it kind of keeps me, I still have an editor and it keeps me focused. Cause it, yeah, you have to be able to produce consistent content. Otherwise your, your money's going to waste. So mm -hmm. I know I have to hire my editor edits 12 videos a month. And I actually slowed down the last mm -hmm. two weeks just because I was making my ebook but my editor does 12 videos a month. So I know that I have to create 12 videos a month in order for me to get the best of my, you know, the best bang for my buck. Um, so yeah, I think, I think you do have to get to a point where you are willing to be consistent and you know you can be consistent. Um, but for me, I'm, I'm not editing <laughs> no videos. Oh. <laughs> that sounds awesome though, 12 videos. That's where I want to get to, is to consistently post three videos a week. I think that's when the channel is really going to, you know, blow up. And I think if I can do that, then I could hit a hundred thousand subscribers next year, but it's just, it's a lot. I don't, I don't know if, if you've ever tried doing it on your own three videos a week, filming, scripting, editing them plus real estate, EXP, mm -hmm. TikTok now, and then trying to have like a social life outside of work. It's so much. Yes. So yes. much. Yeah, yeah. It is a lot. And you have to be able to like really stay strict and be disciplined with your time in order to have a social life because being right. like creating content is a full-time job like it, it is it really is and people will be like oh like some people think creating content is easy but those are usually people who don't post any content <laughs> yeah i mean valuable. one like 15 minute youtube video could take like eight hours to make yes know, like, ridiculous 
Yes, it's crazy. And I learned this because when I was, you know, doing video for people, I would edit like one minute clips for them. I'm like, oh my God, this takes so long just to edit like a one minute Instagram so pic. Oh my God, it was, it was crazy. And I was, you know, I was kind of up and coming. So I wasn't charging that much, but listen, it, it is a lot of work. So any of you agents who are out there thinking about getting on YouTube, it's very rewarding, but it's pretty much just as much work as being a real estate agent, which is why yeah. it is hard to balance the two. Um, but I think I was on you guys' live the other day and I was like, listen, if you're going to do like one, you got to pick a consistent schedule. If you're going to do one video a week, that's very doable. I yeah, feel like, it is. Yeah, I feel like it's very doable for the agent who's still being an agent, but also want to build their brand on YouTube, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and to your point of like hiring an editor before you even start, I think that's a great thing to do if you can do it. Yeah. The, you know, that way you can still focus uh, more of your time on real estate, but also, you know, still put out quality YouTube videos and you don't have to like sacrifice one or the other, right. you know? Yeah. 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 The only way to grow is, is to pretty much outsource. And it is. if you can afford it, you know, you definitely want to, you definitely want to do that. Um, so I guess my next question is, this is like a pretty broad question, but what is your superpower? What do you mean? What's your superpower as you, you're Josh. What is, what is something that you like excel at? Like it could be anything, not YouTube, but whatever it is, like it could be anything. I think I can really connect with people. Um, even though I'm more of like an introvert, uh, I find very few people that I can't like, you know, just strike up a connection with, you know, like sometimes you meet people and it's like, there's like an awkward face, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like what's, what's your favorite color or like, <laughs> you know, tell me a little bit about yourself. It's like, and, and this helps with real estate, you know, especially, you know, going on like appointments, you know, with sellers, I feel like I can connect with somebody. Now I've had some mishaps. Um, this one time I went over for this listing appointment and the guy had like a bunch of like golf memorabilia up on his walls. I know nothing about golf. I've never even held a golf club, but I thought it would be a good idea to bring it up and start talking about golf. And he's like, oh, you're into golf. He starts asking me all these questions that I, and then I look like an idiot because I know nothing about it. <laughs> but for the most part, I think I can kind of connect with people, yeah. um, you know, and just build a friendship pretty easily. Yeah. yeah, no, that's good. I think that's a that's a major superpower because at the end of the day, like business, friendships, relationships, it all comes down to being able to connect with people. Doesn't matter where they're from, like culture or whatever. If you can connect with people, you can build a relationship that can lead into something mutually beneficial for the two of you, um, especially in real estate. They tell you all the time, you got to build rapport, right? Yeah, that's right. It's a yeah. people business. Yeah, it's a people business. Even if you're not, if you, even if you don't know about golf, you can start asking them questions about golf and then start. That's, to, right. you know, that's what I should have done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, it happens all the time. Like I would like on a previous appointments, I would see certain things like, um, like in Philly, I'm here in Philly. So I would see all stuff about Eagles and stuff like that. And I'd be like, oh yeah. Like, so the Eagles, this and that, I don't even like the Eagles. I don't like any Philly teams. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll find a way to connect with them and you know and sometimes they would actually find it funny when I would like go against like Philadelphia teams but Philly fans are pretty um pretty aggressive so you don't want to do that <laughs> yeah um okay so gonna wrap it up here in a few but um I know you said your long-term goal with real estate is to pretty much get into investing now what type of investing are you talking about are you talking about like flipping houses are you talking about like multifamily like apartment building like there's so many different branches of real estate like what is your what type of investment do you want to get into i'd like to do a couple fix and flips you know just to keep things exciting but for the most part do like buy and holds i want to get to the point where like if i buy a property now in 30 years when it's paid off you know that it's bringing in a considerable amount of you know passive income then you know if, if everything goes away for whatever reason i can still live off of my rental properties mm -hmm. you know um, you know, fix and flip, just to keep it exciting. I feel like that'd be pretty fun, especially document on the channel. Um, and then, yeah, I think, I think that's, that's kind of the route I want to go now for buy and holds. I think it's mostly going to be a uh, single family or like small, small multifamilies, you know, like less than four units. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I really see myself investing like, you know, 300 unit apartment buildings. Uh, maybe that's something I'll look into, but for the most part, it's just like small multifamilies, single family buy and holds. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. For, that's pretty much the same with me. Any buy and holds for me in particular, I'm looking at, they have to be also good for short-term rentals um, mm -hmm. because there's so many ways to make money in real estate. And a lot of times we only look at the, the traditional rental 
um, which is good because that's pretty much how you're able to build wealth. But there's so many ways in between like being a traditional rental that you can actually make money like through creative right. financing and these like the Airbnb stuff. I mean, it's you can triple your rental income, <laughs> you oh, know, yeah. Yeah. and still have renting as, you know, a traditional renter, like if need be, you know, right. So that's kind of how I look at renting and f- flipping. It's funny because like I started real estate with my brother and he wants to do a flip so bad. And I'm just like, do you really have the time to do a flip? Because he works a job. And I'm like, this is a lot of time and I can't manage the flip. So can you do the flip? And he's that's right. Like, and it's a yeah. lot. Of, it's a lot of time. So you watch Ryan Panita. He yep. is like the flip, the flip king. Right. And I'm I don't just, know how he does it. He, he has like 64 hours in a day. Like that's yeah. Crazy. Like he's like, yeah, we got like 50 flips this month or something. I'm like, how right. do you, obviously he has a team, but it's like, even to get to that point is like, I feel like one flip would drive me crazy because there's going to be things that come up that you're not prepared for. So I guess, would yeah. are you willing to take on that sacrifice? <laughs> See, that's why I want to get to the point where like real estate investing is all I do, because if I'm doing a fix and flip and I've got to worry about, you know, my clients as a real estate agent, you know, and then all the other things, then, yeah, that might be a bit much. Yeah. So I guess maybe I'd do more fix and flips, but I've got some more, you know, freedom, I guess, mm-hmm. uh, some more flexibility because I, you've got what, like three to six months to make it happen. You know, yeah. if, if you're working like with hard money or something, yeah. you know, you're you're kind of like in a strict deadline and they all, they say things always come up. You budget 50,000, you're going to spend 75, you know? Right. Um, yeah. So I'm like, I'm completely with you there. I think for the first couple investments, it's probably going to just, it's probably just going to be buy and holds and then maybe some fix and flips, you know, once I've got to the point that, you know, I've got a little bit more flexibility. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just being able to spread your time out is like, it, it can be very difficult. So let me, I have two more questions for you. One in regards to time. So, time how do you manage your time between being an agent being on youtube and like having a social life um family everything how did how how do you manage your time what's the best way i like to time block a lot of things really just up until noon uh afternoon if i've got everything done in the morning afternoon the day can just kind of be whatever if it's going on appointments i'll go on appointments if i want to work on youtube i'll work on youtube or tiktok or whatever but for the you know, hours before noon, it's, uh, you know, waking up and going to the gym. Uh, I've been really inconsistent with it. I need to get back, but <laughs> going to the gym, you know, coming back and then it's working on either TikTok or YouTube, you know, for a little bit. Uh, and then I'll get a role play calls, you know, and then I'll make my prospecting calls. And then after that, it's like, you know, follow up, um, you know, either with, you know, the prospects that I've got or working on, you know, the you know, EXP agency and just giving them like the support that I can, um, or it's, you know, working on more prospecting things that aren't necessarily calls, like could be YouTube or TikTok. Um, and then by noon, it's like, I've got all my prospecting stuff out of the way. Then afternoon can just be, you know, other stuff that's not necessarily bringing more leads into my business, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so that way I've got enough time. I'm doing things for re- being a real estate agent and working on EXP. I'm working on uh, TikTok. I'm working on YouTube. Um, you know, in that afternoon, it's like, that's my, you know, building business kind of time. That's going on appointments. That's making YouTube videos, you know? Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. So would you say that you cut it off at a, after a certain point in time? Because I know I have a bad habit of like, you know, still answering people after like eight o'clock and I'm like, I'm trying to stop doing that. But if it's like really mm-hmm. urgent, like let's say if we're closing in a week, like I'm going to respond, but like I have that, that's a really bad habit of mine. Cause then you start to go crazy. Like as a new agent at first, you're like, Oh yeah, I'm going to take all this business. I'm going to do everything I can. I'm going to run around all crazy for my clients to know that I'm going to be there to support them. But like, that's the fastest way to lead the burnout. You know what I mean? So like, do you still take, is there a certain cutoff time that you, that you stop answering people? No, which isn't really a good thing. Cause I know that it's going to get out of hand at some point. Yes. <laughs> now, if it's like ridiculously late at night, then I'm not going to pick up the phone, yeah. but I really haven't had a problem with it so far. And for the most part, I communicate via text. So it's like, you know, two seconds, like I can just send a text, um, but, you know, for other things, like if it's not calls, if it's like going on appointments or making videos, I just kind of end the day whenever I want. Usually I don't go on appointments after like 6 p.m. Right, um, right. But if I want to stay up making videos, you know, I'll do that. Um, right, but right. yeah, as far as like communication calls, texts, uh, I just kind of take it whenever I want to. <laughs> um, if it's like super late, I probably won't. But if I have time, then I probably will. 
Yeah, yeah, it, it'll get out of hand very quickly. And I know. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I'm dealing with right now, where I'm just like, okay, I've already answered them like past this time, but now I have to retrain them. Like, listen, I'm not, I have so many other clients I can't be dealing with you guys, or I'm going to go crazy. Like, literally, mm -hmm. I have clients texting me at 9, 10, 11 o'clock, and then it gets to like the early morning, 6 a.m. And I try not to answer any clients until about 8 or 9, depending on how, what time I get back from the gym and everything like that. But it gets out of hand. <laughs> yeah, does. Um, so I guess just to wrap things up, um, what is some words of advice that you would give new agents, whether they want to be on YouTube or not, or just like just a general real estate advice? What would you give to new agents out there who are looking to, you know, grow their business, expand and everything like that? Well, um, kind of what's helped me is just trying to stay consistent with whatever you're doing. There's been some periods in time where I've been inconsistent with my cold calling and then my business has suffered. But then when I get back consistent with it, I get results. So like yesterday, I set three listing appointments. So I might pick up two or three listings today, um, you know, and then on the times where I'm not consistent, I'm, I'm like, I'm getting nothing, you know? Um, so it's like picking one thing. If that's cold calling for you, that's great. If it's door knocking or social media or mailers, you know, whatever it is, just like pick it and stay consistent with it for a very long time, you know, months, years. Um, just don't, you know, give up too soon. There's going to be times where like, oh my goodness, I'm getting like no results, you know, let me go and try something else. That's a mistake. Just stick with what you're doing and try and become the best that you can at that one thing, you know? Right. I agree. I agree. And actually one last question that I wanted to ask you off air, but I might as well ask you now. Um, how did you come across wholesaling? Like what made you get interested in that? I haven't really, I wouldn't even say I've really like come across it. Like it's not something I'm like, you know, doing actively right now, but it's, it's something that I want to do for like a YouTube video, you know? So I was thinking, okay, I need to expand my channel. I don't want to make real estate agent content forever. What else can I do? That's real estate or, you know, finance related. And I've heard of wholesaling before, you know, Stephanie is always like, oh, Josh, you got to get into wholesaling. You got to do it. It's a lot of fun. I'm like, nah, I'll do it later. You know? Yeah. Um, but eventually I want to put out a video. Like I tried wholesaling for 30 days and, you know, just see the results. So I've been, you know, just kind of thinking about it, you know, trying to learn a little bit more about it. And it seems like it could be something that I'd have a lot of fun in, not something that I want to do like full time, mm -hmm. you know, I'm doing a whole lot of other full time endeavors, but I think on the side, you know, just be fun to, just kind of learn more about it. Yeah. Yeah. Wholesaling is, it can be fun. Um, and you can make a lot of money, but it also can be yeah. very difficult. Like for example, um, I just closed on two last month and then I just got one under contract yesterday, but it's not always like, you know, it's, you know, glitz and glam. Like yesterday we got it in the contract, probably going to be about a 5k deal. So nothing, nothing crazy, not but, you know, turnaround is pretty quick. Um, yeah. the problem is now she got a higher offer she already uh -oh. signed the contract. Now she got a higher offer. Now she's like, oh, well, you know, I want to go with this offer. And I'm just like, you already signed the contract, but you know, I'm not going to, you know, she told me within a day. So I'm not, I'm not probably not going to hold her to it, but it's like, it's not all glitz and glam, but you can, honestly, you can make a lot of money with wholesaling and how yeah. I look at it, being a real estate agent, like you get more deals. This has been my experience. You get more deals as a real estate agent because you're just known. Like that's, that's the professional that people reach out to when it comes to real estate. Um, they don't really know too much about wholesalers, but being on the wholesale side, you get higher, you get more money. So it's like more oh, yeah. an agent, but more bigger, bigger checks as a wholesaler. But when you're both like right now, I used to like, I used to actively prospect to get wholesale deals. Like now people kind of already know me in that space and I'm an agent. So it's like, I get like the, the best of both worlds in a sense. And that's why I actually encourage oh, wholesalers to become licensed because now I, I'm kind of just getting deals from word of mouth. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's kind of been my wholesale journey a little bit. But yeah, you know, if you have any questions when it comes to wholesaling, if you do want to start that 30 days of wholesaling, just, you know, hit me up. I'm here to answer any questions you may have. I'm not the, I haven't done a hundred deals, but I have done a couple and, you know, it's, it's been favorable. So um, yeah. definitely feel free to reach out. <clears throat> I will. This has um, been awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really appreciate you hopping on with me. Like you, I've been watching your channel for a couple months now. And it's been really cool. So I'm glad we got the chance to connect. I'm still going to be hopping on your Instagram lives and okay. I, I need you to post more on Instagram. <laughs> I know. I, one of these days I will. <laughs> one of <Yeah>. these days. <laughs> but yeah, thank you again so much, Josh. Um, where can the people find you? Uh, the best place to find me is probably YouTube. Uh, that's just my first last name, Joshua Irabu. Uh, it's, it's the same everywhere, YouTube, Instagram, uh, where else you can go and check out my TikTok videos if you want. They're not super high quality yet, but, uh, again, 
same handle. Um, yeah. Instagram is probably the best way to reach me though. Okay. Instagram is the best way to reach you. And you do have yeah. a YouTube course. So anybody who's interested in learning more about YouTube, you can go check out Josh's course. I also have an ebook. If you're interested in reading the ebook, check that out. Both will be in our Instagram bios. Yep. Um, and with that, again, thank you so much, Josh. If you guys haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do uh, hit the like button and hit the no notification bell so you don't miss when I drop the next video. And until next time, guys, I will see you later. All right.